All right, so here's a new read I'm gonna to try to finish. This one has been rough scraped and balanced. So when I put it away, it was crowing a sea in octaves. So this is what it's gonna crow like first time out of the water. <laughs> Sorry, that probably hurt your ears. That's not um, where we're gonna leave it. So I'm gonna document how I'm gonna fix this from this point forward. All right, so here is um, that read I just crowed on. And this is not the king, not king that I've gouged. Um, I believe it is probably done on an inality gouge. Um, and it is a narrower shape than what I use. This is a read that I'm possibly going to give a student um, so this is on a Joshua shape. I normally use uh, Caleb minus one. So just so you know that this is slightly different than the norm. And the question when you're trying to dial in a read is what do you do first? That's always the big question. So for me, the first thing I always do is try to figure out what the tip does because the tip is the first thing to vibrate. So the tip has, has some falseness in it. Um, it's also flat, it's fuzzy, it's not clear. Um, so even before I clip it, which is what probably many of you would do, I'm gonna go ahead and thin it because thinning the tip will close up the tip a little bit, which will help raise the pitch so I don't have to keep clipping it, all right? So I'm gonna sharpen my knife real quick. And put on my fancy glasses so that I can better see what I'm doing. And then I'm gonna try to figure out where I should start. So you can even tell by this angle, which is why using your iPhone when you make reads is super helpful. You can tell that there's like a bunch of extra cane right here I got it a little thin over there, but then when you turn it over, this blade all by itself is a lot thicker. So I will clean this up, but I'm gonna start by thinning um, this part of the reed. Or this part of the tip, sorry, I'm a little tired. It's been a lot. I'm gonna get try to get as close as I can to the edge, I'm not using any pressure. I'm just kind of letting the knife grab it. Whatever's sticking up. How's that looking? That's looking a lot better on that side. Now let's clean up the fun side. And yes, there's a little fuzz there, a little fray happening, which I really don't want to get worse. But sometimes I think of that as natural selection. Meaning, <laughs> if it gets worse, then obviously this read was not meant to make it to the finish stage. Oh, sorry, I drifted off camera when I did that, didn't I? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Out of practice, out of practice. Okay. There we go. Okay. So you can see I ripped the side there a little bit. Oopsie. No one's going to see that when it's in my mouth, right? Now, I hope you can tell that that's like a huge amount better. Now, there's a little bird in there, and I'm going to predict that that is because part of the tip is vibrating 
um, there's that little thin spot that I had noticed here. It's a little bit thinner right through there. Um, I want to get rid of that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and sharpen my knife. And we'll see if we can get that a bit better. Oh, it's much better vibrations, much better vibration. So again, this is the side. I already ripped a little bit of the side off. This looks so nice and pretty and even, but I can tell, I can see where there's some thickness, especially on this right side. So I'm going to do this. much cleaner and more stable that grow is and that's all because I'm cleaning up that unevenness now that bird will be take me a minute or two to kind of track down and I birds are a pain in the ass when they develop it's usually a sign that you've dug your knife in usually in the back of the tip in some way. Um, this is a soft piece of cane. I'm not real crazy about it. Also found with that in a lady gouge that it really needs a couple of things, and that is good um, thinning of the sides of the tip, particularly at the V. My new phone, it's a little bit, I gotta figure out the f focus thing. What I'm looking at right now is I'm looking at this, the slope, and how it's angled on each blade. And I'm trying to determine, yeah, see, it's not the same. It's a little bit more gradual. On this one. And a little bit more to find on the other side. So I might that might be the next thing I try to address. I am gonna do a clip. Um sorry, I never clip on camera because I can never do it straight. So you're just gonna have to trust me that I know what I'm doing when I clip a clip a read. So what I'm hearing in that crow, the tip crow is up. As I blow harder, it's pulling the pitch of the crow flat. And we really, really, really don't want that, especially on a student read. Because they really haven't, most of the time, haven't quite figured out how to blow enough and support their sound enough that they can compensate for that. I mean, technically, none of us should have that on our reads, but... I would be willing to bet that a lot of um, players will not be that picky about that little girl. Um, so to fix that or to help remedy the fact that the low crow is being pulled flat, I know that on this gouge, I need to go into the back a lot more to kind of help support that. So I've done my small clip. I've adjusted the V and thinned it out. Um, and then now the next thing I'm gonna do is 
take some cane out of the back to see if I can fix that low crow pitch issue. And I'm gonna do this by starting at the top of the back and just kind of defining that a little bit more. And then I'm gonna stay real close to the rail, or not the, excuse me, not the rail, the spine, and lengthen back. And I really wanna get the bottom of the back a little bit more um, defined, thinner, I'm not sure what you wanna call it. Need to, I want to bring that little bottom part just tuck that down a little bit so it's more curvaceous when I look at it from the side okay so now I've got to make the other side match so same deal this out. I did barely anything in the back on this read. But that's normal for me. I usually hold off on doing a whole lot in the back until I've got the heart and the tip balanced the way I want. I like to use the back to kind of modify the curl. So this is only one blade. So that's already a huge difference. So here's the side I just did. Compared to this one, you can tell, right? That this one's thicker. I should make that more even than this side. So now I've got to make this side look more like this side. So we will do the same exact thing. Sharpen my knife. And we're going to start up here. Although I think I tucked that in. Yeah, it's a little higher up than on the other side. Oopsie. hate cane that does that. See how you can kind of even see the layers pull through? Ugh. Thank you, cane. I hate bad cane. But unfortunately, you gotta work with what you've got. Okay, let's see, how are we doing? I'm looking at the bottom of the back. See, I just want a little bit more out of the bottom of the back. Okay. Ta-da! So that's a truer octave. It's a much more in tune octave. dial the tip in a little bit but I'm going to go ahead and play on it to see what it, how it's kind of emerging wow um i say wow 
sloppy because it's a really light read. And it needs a clip. So I played on it. You heard what it sounded like when I crowed it beforehand. It was kind of up. But now I've played on it and it's sunk again. The pitch of the crow has sunk again. I've got enough length in the tip. Um, it's got enough response in that tip curl that I'm comfortable clipping it again to see if that helps stabilize the crow and keeps it in one pitch zone. on a different couch. Um, the things that crop up. It's not bad. It's definitely in the ballpark. But I don't, see, I don't like the instability in that tip. And what that means is, sorry, I'm really going to have to figure this out, aren't I? There we go. Um, hopefully you'll be watching this on YouTube and you can just fast forward it. <laughs> How to fix. I did not do a good job of setting up. Do you see how I've got two different transitions? This is transition is longer between the blend and the tip and it's more V'd on this blade than this one. So that I think is where I need to go next. And to do that, I'm going to do that away from the camera because I really can't work from the side, which is what I do this way. At some point, I will ask someone how to do this so I can set it up so that I don't have to do this janky little maneuver. But, um, you know, uh, I do the best I can. All right, so stay tuned, and I'll pop back on in a sec. All right, it's been a few minutes later. I've just messed with the sides of the tip. I've taken a little bit more out of the back. Um, and I think I've got it about where I would want to just play on it for a while and see how it blows in. instability there and a little bit of um, glitch between the tip and the heart. I mean the tip and the heart, the high and the low curl. But I mean, I think I can get that closer. And actually, that's a good sign. So as I'm playing on it, I mean, I'm just kind of noodly noodly, but it's getting a little bit more stable. I, I don't like that um, wavering between the tip and the heart the high curl and the low curl. I like them when they are more homogenous, but I think this is a, at a good enough point for me to say, okay, let's let it sit. Although, you know, here's what I'm doing right now. I'm kind of feeling the spring. I've got a nice heart. You know, I'm going to just do it. I'm going to do it because this is what the read is telling me it wants me to do. It feels still like there's just too much rigidity in the back. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just, you 
a tad bit more aggressive in the back. So again, I'm trying to build reeds, especially if I'm going to make one for a student where their embouchure doesn't have to do the work. The thing that is often difficult for them to transition to is the air support, however, has to be there. And I think a lot of times they come in using their embouchure as their pr primary means of support and not their air. Whereas for me, the air is... is what I rely on, right? And then I build the reed to take the air and, you know, sort of focus the air, stabilize the air. I think a lot of times because they play on reeds that are not so great, they get their embouchure doing all that kind of work. And yes, I realize it's a very up crow, but again, I... I use a lot of air support. So I tend to make mine crow a little flat because that's where I'm comfortable. But I can't do that with student reads because otherwise they'll be ridiculously flat. Until they, of course, learn to sport. that would be quite nice. Oh, I still want a little bit more stability there. But I think I need to play on it and then see what it does. All right, I'll take some pictures, knit all that together. Um, you can fast forward through all the boring bits and hopefully it makes sense or you find it interesting. And again, this is a read. Da -da 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 -da. This is a reed that comes from an inner lady gouge and is on a Joshua plus four. I mean, no, excuse me. Excuse me. Inner lady gouge and a Joshua tip. Okay. Um, yeah. Let me see if I can show you without having to take pictures, which would save me a wee bit of time. Let me try to give you a back view there so you can see what it's looking like when it's backlit. It's a nice looking read. I still don't have the transition right between the heart and the tip. Yeah, it's a little bit higher. I bet if I were to clean that up on this blade, that would take care of it. But we will do that on probably tomorrow. Yeah, so there you go.